I want to bring in our next guest here at the Republican National Convention. He comes from the great state of Florida and the great city of Miami. Joining me now is Miami Mayor Francis Suarez. You may remember him as a 2024 Republican presidential candidate who went on to endorse former President Trump after he dropped out of the race. Mayor, how are you doing? Great to have you here. It's good to be with you, Tom. When you look out of the convention floor, right, you're one of the new faces, the younger faces of the Republican Party. What do you think? Well, I think it's interesting that uh, tonight's VP choice is going to be someone from my generation, a 39-year-old, uh, someone who also has a tech and finance background, as you know, I've sort of made my claim to fame uh, being a tech mayor, right. and also someone who came from humble beginnings, which I think is important. I think this election is going to be about connecting with everyday people and pocketbook issues. And I think uh, the the Democrats have sort of lost that, I believe. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, President Trump is trying to really maintain that focus uh, by choosing J.D. Vance. Were you upset that Senator Rubio didn't, didn't widen out this ticket? Well, you know, uh, as you can imagine, as a Miami guy, uh, obviously I'm very close to the senator. I supported him in 2016. That would have been great to have him. But, uh, you know, Listen, he has rallied behind J.D. Vance. We all have. This is uh, about being a team. And uh, we're team players, and we know that the, the president has chosen a, a very qualified person uh, who has a great narrative, a great story, and is very capable uh, and has been a magnificent uh, senator in the short time that he's been there. So um, he's going to do a great job tonight, and I think he's going to articulate a vision for the next generation of America. Some people think Florida is now a red state. It's no longer a battleground state, and we could debate that. But South Florida, Miami-Dade, where you're from, that is definitely still battleground a battleground. Republicans have made gains with Hispanics there. It's one of those unique counties in this country that is majority Latino. What are what are the Hispanics in the city of Miami telling you about this election and what they want to hear about? I think they want to make sure that they're not treated as a monolith, right? What happens, and what I think the Democratic Party did at some level, is take them for granted by calling them Latinx and sort of branding them monolithically. I think, uh, you know, Cubans have different issues than Venezuelans, Nicaraguans, et cetera. And so I think part of the reason why uh, the Republican Party has been successful, and you saw gains, as you mentioned, in 2016, Democrats, Hillary Clinton specifically, won Dade County by 30 points. In the midterm, uh, just in 2022, DeSantis and Marco Rubio won Dade County by 10 and 12 points respectively. So that's a 40-point swing, which means that the policies that have been implemented by the Republican Party have resonated with the specific categories of Hispanics in Dade County, and I think you, that's important. Do you think the branding of socialism and connecting that with the Democratic candidates in 2020 is that still a problem for Democrats in 2024, or have they been able to shed that label? No, it is absolutely a problem, Tom. I think that for some reason they have a hard time shedding the label. They don't want to just come out and say, look, we're not about socialism. Um, we believe in the... And I want to be clear, way. President Biden in no way is a socialist. I, it came from, from, from Bernie Sanders that he was a Democratic socialist, and the Republicans, yeah, socialist, you know, and, they, they played politics and, with that phrase. And I would have, I'd agree at some level that the president uh, has, has tried to shed that label. I yeah. just don't think the party has done it very effectively for some reason. I think there are some people that are very sympathetic to socialism ideas in the party, and I think that's part of the problem. Uh, but I don't think the president necessarily falls in that category. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, Republicans certainly, uh, you know, we have no problem condemning socialism, uh, particularly people who came from socialist countries like my parents did uh, and saw it destroy their country of birth. Uh, we love this country. We feel blessed to be here. We think the American way is the best way, the best road to prosperity. Uh, and we see it in Miami, where we've lowered taxes, we've reduced crime to record levels, and we have the highest wage growth in America and the lowest unemployment. So these Republican principles have created prosperity in a city that used to be blue. Speaking of crime, I do want to ask you this, because the, the headlines were seen all over the world in the videos. What happened at, at the Copa? What happened in that game in Miami where people just stampeded the stadium? Yeah. It was dangerous, it was criminal, and it was yeah. out of control. How did that happen in a city in America? In well, your city. It, it didn't happen in my city. Yeah, so okay, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's now Florida, at least. Yeah, yeah. So, so it happened in Miami-Dade County, yeah. and uh, it was unfortunate. I, I think there was obviously not significant, you know, sufficient security. It wasn't, uh, you know, uh, handled the way that a Super Bowl should be handled. And I think as we embark on the World Cup, which is coming in 2026, I'm sure that not only Hard Rock, um, you know, FIFA, uh, and of course, we're here to help. Even though it's not our jurisdiction, it wasn't our responsibility, we were asked late Sunday night to provide aid, and we did, just like we provided aid and officers here to Milwaukee at the behest of the chief of, of Milwaukee, the police chief. So we're here to help. We want to be able to, to help them as well. And then finally, last question, what, what do you want to do politically? What else do you think you can do for Floridians in your political future if you decide to run again? 
first of all, I'm just very blessed that I had a, a good track record as mayor of the city of Miami. Like I said, we had the lowest per capita homicide rate last year. We lowered taxes to the lowest level ever. I inherited a, a bankrupt city and we turned it around. Um, so for me, I think from a resume perspective, uh, one thing that would be interesting is looking at a, an ecosystem like the state of Florida, potentially running for governor, maybe doing something in the administration. You want to run for perhaps. governor eventually? It's something that I would consider for sure. Okay. Yeah. Mayor Suarez, great to see you. Thank you for being here. Good to be with you, Tom. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.